Well, hello, Friendship Online community. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I do realize the reality of our, our current situation with COVID-19. Um, I know many have lost their jobs or on reduced hours, and there, there is fear and uncertainty. And, and so last week, we started into a series called Messy Faith, uh, looking at the life of Joseph from Genesis chapter 37. And, you know, one of the things I appreciate about the Bible is that it, it never sugarcoats life. Life is messy, and we have to figure out our faith in God in a messy environment. Things do not always go well. In fact, many times God uses these messy things in life to show us His incredible grace and provision and power. And it's in the messiness of life that, that we can see the forgiveness and the mercy of God, where we can truly experience His love in new ways. And so, if you missed last week, well, uh, it's on our website. You can watch it anytime. I mean, what else were you doing? Netflix? And anyway, the recap, Joseph was the favorite son of Jacob. He was the baby. He got the, the colorful power coat. He was the tattletale. But he had 11 brothers that absolutely hated him. And one day they got their chance to kill him. But Reuben convinced them not to kill him. And instead, he was sold into slavery. He was one, having one of those really bad days. He had a messy family, messy life, messy faith. And so today we're going to look at what happened to Joseph, where did he end up, how did he handle this crisis, and, and really, isn't that what we're all dealing with right now? How do we handle this crisis? Do we curl up and hope to die or, or feel sorry for ourselves, or, or do we stay strong and accept our situation and do the best that we can? And so let's look at, as the story continues, this is Genesis chapter 39. It says this, now Joseph had been taken to Egypt, an Egyptian man named Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh and the captain of the guard, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had brought him there. The Lord was with Joseph and he became a successful man, serving in the household of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made everything he did successful, Joseph found favor with his master and became his personal attendant. Potiphar also put him in charge of his household and placed all that he owned under his authority. From the time that he put him in charge of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house because of Joseph. The, Lord blessed, the Lord's blessing was on all that he owned in his house and in his fields. He left all that he owned under Joseph's authority he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Now Joseph was well built and handsome. Okay, so the first thing that we notice here is that even though Joseph is sold into slavery, the Lord is still with him. I think this is actually a significant statement for us to grab onto. So many times when things are, are going well, they're going right, we think the Lord is good, God is blessing me, and, and that's true, the Lord is good and He does bless us, but then things go wrong, or at least they go wrong in our eyes, in our perfect plan, and, and things get hard, life gets messy, and, and sometimes our first reaction is to think, why God? Why do you allow this? Why have you abandoned us? But God does not abandon us. If you are a follower of Jesus, if you have surrendered your life to Him, then the, His Holy Spirit is in you. He's always with you in the good times and the bad. So what we need to do is respond with the kind of character that Joseph responds with. He, he knows the Lord is with him, and so he gets to work. Sure, he's a slave now in a foreign land, but instead of fighting it, he gets to work. He works hard. He does the best that he can do. And God blesses his hard work by making everything that he does a success. He comes into Potiphar's house, just a lowly Hebrew slave. But soon, Potiphar sees his hard work. He sees that, you know, this slave isn't filled with self-pity, but... He's filled with character and work ethic and is honorable, but and very quickly he rises to the top. In fact, he puts Joseph in charge of everything he has, except, of course, for the food, because, I mean, you know, he's an Egyptian, and Egyptians don't eat with Hebrews. I mean, they have some standards. 
So we see the character of Joseph. Some uh, it, it comes shining through. We, we see God's blessing as Joseph works hard and, and God blesses it. And we think, yeah, that's the way it should be. Look, sometimes we don't experience God's blessing because we don't work for it. I, I mean, many people think, well, God should bless me first and, and then I will believe and uh, then I'll work hard. God, show me that you're worthy. But no, no, no. God is worthy. We are the ones who need to work to get close to Him. Not for salvation. Jesus has accomplished our salvation on the cross. And he has, he has paid the price for us. We have full access to the Father through Him. But we need to work out our salvation in fear and trembling. We need to run the race and pursue righteousness and godliness. And, and it, it takes discipline and character building. And it's hard. But God sees our efforts and he, he will bless us when we pursue righteousness. Joseph did this even in slavery. And he had not even heard the prophet Jeremiah tell the Israelites when they were about to become slaves themselves. And Jeremiah says this in, in Jeremiah 29 verse 7, Seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. The people were commanded to accept the place they were carried off to, accept that they were in a foreign land, and work hard, because if the people of that land prospered, then they would prosper, and, and so they would be contributing into the society there. And we need to accept the situation that we're in as well, and work hard in that situation. And if we can work hard to improve it, then let's do that. If we can work hard to get closer to God in it, then let's do that. If we can bless others in it, let's work hard in doing that. If we can isolate to beat this virus and, and save lives and, and, and flatten the curve, then we need to do that. But don't get stuck in the quicksand of self-pity. Rise above with character. Work hard in every in whatever situation we are in because God is with you. Our passage ended with a curious statement though, didn't it? Now Joseph was well-built and handsome. Oh, what a curse it is to be well-built and handsome. I, I mean, uh, I wouldn't know uh, personally, but but that's what I hear. And, and that was the case for Joseph as well, because it, it as things are going so well, then this happens. This is verse 7. After some time, his master's wife looked longingly at Joseph and said, Sleep with me. But he refused. Look, he said to his master's wife, With me here, my master does not concern himself with anything in his house, and he has put all that he owns under my authority. No one in the house is greater than I am. He has withheld nothing from me except you because you are his wife. So how could I do this immense evil and how could I sin against God? Many times it's easy to have good character when everything is going well, but then Satan throws temptation at us. How do we respond to this temptation? For Joseph, it was sexual temptation. Now, we have no indication on how Joseph is feeling about this because it really doesn't matter. The Bible is very clear on what is right and what is wrong. I mean, look at Proverbs 5 for a, a descriptive example if you want to, but it, it's pretty clear. God is clear through the scriptures about his people. Going, uh, going to bed with someone that is not your wife, not your husband, is a sin against God. 2 Timothy 2 verse 22 says, Flee from youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Remember, Joseph was 17, 18 by this point, and I'm sure he was not immune to the youthful passions of a 17 or 18-year-old man. But righteousness calls us to flee from them. There are temptations and challenges that require us to stand firm and stay strong and overcome, and this is one where we are instructed to flee from. 
Joseph stood his ground in a responsible response, uh, in a reasonable response that would allow Potiphar's wife to accept his reasons and save face. He would, uh, he just turned her down. But then it says in verse 10, Although she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her. Now, one day he went into the house to do his work, and none of the household servants were there. She grabbed him by his garments and said, Sleep with me. But leaving his garment in her hands, he escaped and ran outside. When she saw that he had left his garment with her and had run outside, she called her household servants. Look, she said to them, my husband has brought a Hebrew man to make fools of us. He came to me so he could sleep with me and I screamed as loud as I could. When he heard me screaming for help, he left his garment beside me and ran out, ran outside. She put Joseph's garment beside her until his master came home. Then she told him the same story. The Hebrew slave you brought to us came to make a fool out of me. But when I screamed for help, he left his garment beside me and ran outside. When his master heard the story his wife told him, these things your slave did to me, he was furious and had him thrown into prison where the king's prisoners were confined. So Joseph was there in prison. Okay, but wait a minute. Joseph did the right thing. Why is he being falsely accused? Why is he being thrown into jail? Just when things are going so well. I mean, how could this happen? Have you been there? Things were going so well and you thought, God is with me, and then something completely out of your control happens. Now now you're worse off than before. Remember, even Jesus was falsely accused, did nothing wrong, and he was punished for our sin. This is nothing new for us. Uh, For myself, my journey throughout life has been pretty messy too. Out of high school, I did an electrical apprenticeship. And then God called me into ministry, and so I went to Bible school. But I didn't finish in the normal way, and I I did a a four-year degree. It took over five. And then there was no church looking for a pastor, so I worked as a cabinet maker in a cabinet shop. And and then I took an associate pastor role, and, and that didn't work out. And suddenly I found myself an electrician, a cabinet maker, a pastor, begging a cabinet company for a minimum wage job so I could empty garbage cans and deliver kitchens. It's what I had to do to feed my family, and maybe that's you right now. It's a very difficult place to be in, and I understand that. But I want you to know that God is still with you. Even in the valley of this messy life, even in the hardships, God teaches us about his character, about himself. He shows us things that we would never have seen before. I remember learning that my value is not in what I do, but it's found in who I am in God. I am a child of God, whether I'm wiring a house or building cabinets or preaching or emptying garbage cans. It doesn't matter. I am a child of God. What I do does not define me. God defines me. Joseph went from being the favorite son, the babied one, the one who got special privileges. But when he was sold into slavery, he didn't sit there dreaming of escaping or going back home. He just focused on who he was as a follower of God. Look at what Romans chapter 12 has to say. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed to the, by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Joseph was asked to conform to the sin of of his master's wife, and yet he would not. Instead, God used it to transform him into something greater. Yeah, I know, he was sent to prison. Well, actually, 
That in itself was a blessing. Most slaves would have been executed for something like that. But here is a sneak peek into next week. Because of the character of Joseph, it didn't stop in Potiphar's house. It carried on even into prison. This is Genesis 39 verse 21. But the Lord was with Joseph and extended kindness to him. He granted him favor with the prison warden. The warden put all the prisoners who were in the prison under Joseph's authority, and he was responsible for everything that was done there. The warden did not bother with anything under Joseph's authority because the Lord was with him, and the Lord made everything that he did successful. I mean, isn't that incredible? What, what an inspiration for us. Even when you think you have it bad, God can still extend his kindness to us. Even in prison, God was working and the character of Joseph was noticed. The attitude of God was, uh, or the attitude of Joseph was noticed. The result that God was working through him was noticed. So the question for us today is this, what do people notice in you? Do they notice how in any circumstance you can always see God working? Do they notice good work ethic, impeccable character? Do they notice that you actually care about other people? That you make a difference wherever you go? Do they notice the blessing of the Lord on your life? Do they notice that in the messiness of life, you still have hope and faith and courage in the Lord? These things become noticeable when God is with us, when we surrender our will to His, when we see that our value is not in what we do, but it's in who we are as children of God. Only then can we truly make a difference for God in this world. Life is all over the place sometimes. It can be truly messy. It, it gets even messier when it's actually our fault because we've sinned, but it can be messy because we don't sin as well, because we choose righteousness. And when it gets messy, as followers of Jesus, we need to go to him, surrender ourselves once again, and ask him, what would you have me do in this? Allow your character to shine through for all to see, so that in the good and the bad, in the messiness of life, God will be able to work fully through you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you always are working in our lives, that you are with us in the good and the bad. God, you will show your kindness to us. And so help us to see that, God. Help us to see how you are working in all of this, in every situation. And we thank you that your loving kindness is always with us. God, give us strength, give us courage, even in these uncertain times. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for being with us today. I long to see your faces soon, but until then, stay strong, go to God, and ask for His courage. Allow God to build your character throughout this time. I'm Pastor Tim from Friendship Community Church.